skills have become very important these days, particularly uh, with uh, the Silicon Valley Bank closing and expected to be the second largest bailout in bank in the United System. And then the First Republic Bank also going out under the belt now. These necessitate that the economy may have some jolt. Given that the economy may have some jolt, textile being product of discretionary spending, we have to be very cognizant of price point. And there is so much you can do, there is only so much you can do with, uh, with regard to the raw materials in any manufacturing setup. Then all you do think of is cost cutting in some way and one of the form of cost cutting is to enhance the productivity of workforce. So Dr. Rao alluded to the fact that how things were not very rudimentary eight years back and then how uh, under his leadership and then under Dr. Mishra, the textile sector skill force has taken on board the task to have a national wide, nationwide setup to increase the skills. It's more and more skill development is increasing. Uh, the gravity of such uh, PPs private public partnership schemes have become very important. In United States and in developed economies, I guess there is a gentle lady joining from Geneva, they know predominantly these are all driven by private sector. More and more private sector takes the responsibility of infusing skills uh, towards its own growth. Of course, there are some very little hand holding from government. But the economy of such countries like United States, Germany are huge. Even a small contribution of GDP in terms of towards the skill growth is very large in quantitative terms, in terms of dollar value or euro value. Having said that, how do we do that? It's predominantly private sector driven as against a PP well-structured uh, government supported scheme in India. Uh, so I should express my kudos to the government of India and all those like CTE and other leadership there who did this. Okay. One thing I think uh, what is kind of missing, maybe I'm not aware, is a state, uh, states joining, particularly in terms of textiles where there is heavy textile manufacturing such as Tamil Nadu and cotton production, particularly in Gujarat and Maharashtra, states' contribution need to be buffed up. Where I am from Texas, uh, Texas is the largest exporter of cotton per se. It is the world's ninth largest economy. Even though it is a state, the size of Texas is far more than that of France. So it's the ninth largest economy on its own. The state of Texas pumps in money roughly for the state of Texas. It's very small amount, meager amount. But there is a program called Workforce Skill Development Fund in the range of about $50 million dollars which is again allotted to a leading agency, such as a community college or an industry association like uh, Texas Cotton Ginners Association, Plains Cotton Growers Association. They take the lead and then they take a challenge which the industry faces. So it's predominantly private sector driven. The responsibility is given to the private sector with some funds and they have to compete. It's a capitalist system, so we have to compete for it. And then based on the proposal, the money is given. And then the participants from the industry do get the benefit to join as a complementary basis. So there is no cost to the industry. And this program is developed collectively with all the stakeholders in question. Because the industry people are those who face the problem. Like Dr. Rao alluded to, there are industries facing problem in analyzing a new machinery handling. Then they join force, which uh, Texas, uh, the, uh, which the textile skill force is doing. Why we need to do this? I said that more and more, uh, the labor advantages which India had is eroding. So you need to increase the productivity. You need to deliver a product at a price point, at a competitive price point, compared to some neighbors, particularly Vietnam, Pakistan, and Bangladesh where the industry is growing in the rate of about 15 to 17 percent. Government of India has set an ambitious target during this Amrit call by 2047. If my memory serves me correctly, the market size of this Indian textile sector should be about 350 billion US dollars. 
of which 100 billion or more must be on export. If that's the question of export, then quality comes to play. Domestic market size should be about 250 billion US. In that case, there is only so much you can do with regard to the raw material because it is very finite. There are capacity enhancement needed. And the cost things are dependent on so many factors, particularly if you take cotton. So given that uh, very little maneuvering you can do in the raw materials, all that we can do is we cannot adjust the payroll of labor force, which I am again glad that Dr. Rao pointed in terms of migrant labor issues and things like that. So only thing you could do is enhance the efficiency on, and the productivity of workforce. So I think there is two things I would suggest is, Constantly upgrade the program, like Dr. Rao again said that if there are any new developments happening, the centrally uh, funded uh, partnership uh, initiative in India need to constantly update its program and the modules. And the second thing is, look at uh, my way of doing is, look at, uh, I'm, I always used to give analogy, let's take this skill development as a stool. A stool stands on three legs. Don't ask me why there are only three legs. We want to go through the minimal route. So three legs are enough to stand the stool because the title what Dr. Mishra gave me is sustainable and balanced growth. So you can balance a stool with three legs. Don't ask me why the table has four legs. The question of balancing. Okay, so stools has three legs. Likewise, the sector should enhance skills at three level. One, the, the, where the rubber meets the road. The technical level people who operate the machine, I think that they are doing it uh, very well with the modules. That's the first rung of the ladder. And the second uh, leg of the stool is middle level who are supervisory in nature where they come in between the top level management and the day-to-day -day operators. So that middle level needs certain different skill sets. Uh, which I think has not been addressed. Maybe it is getting addressed, I don't know. So technical expertise is there. I think 86 modules or uh, so what Dr. Rao alluded would take care of it. And then the second leg of the stool is the second rung, which is very important. It's like a managerial level, mid-level, where in addition to technical skill enhancement, you need to have soft skill because personal handling personal is very difficult. So that's very important. Again, the question of attrition has come into play here. So the, the, the skill force initiative or workforce development initiative should not only leave at the technical side, it also should look into some soft skills. And the third aspect is at that higher level where projects are planned. And the uh, Honorable Minister um, Sri Goyal has charged the industry that industry should uh, go for a growth of around 15 to 17 percent on an annual basis if it has to reach a level of 350 billion US. If that's the case, it's the higher management who are going to decide the projects. So they also need additional skills like to, 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 to landscape the sector, to understand how the sector is, because there are investments coming. Investments are coming from promoters who may not be in textiles. Right, who may not be risk takers. So those skills have to be imparted. So the next level is technical level module development, soft skill module development, and the third one is project level management for top level people. These may be promoters. And at, at least once a year, association should make sure that to start with these three set of people undergo what is called in United States, it's built on medical profession, they have to go what is called as continuing professional education credits. Like Dr. Rao said, these modules you offer, offer nationwide, whether it's in Tirupur or in Coimbatore or in, uh, or in uh, Karnataka somewhere, Ubli, Darwar. So it's, this is again a responsibility of the industry. You need an industry buy-in to at least dedicate some hours of their workforce to constantly update them with what are called as continuing professional credit hours, which United States and Europe uh, are doing. I'm not here to preach. I'm only here to share how things are done. These things are basically driven at the industry level. And how do you do? Uh, I don't know how much it is visible. I'll share this with Dr. Uh, Mishra. She may share this with you. How do we go about doing this? 
I take it as a pyramid and then there are four sections of a pyramid. How can we improve? I said that uh, analogy of a stool, a technical level development, mid-level development and then higher level development. And then how do you landscape this? First, we need to sense what is the weak link detecting the need. For example, in terms of technical textiles, there is enough knowledge there. But we need to have practical ideas and practical know-how. That is sensing. Once you sense, you need to know what skills have to be imparted. That I think uh, the sex, uh, skill council is already doing uh, by building modules, at least at the technical level. That is shaping. Once you shape, shield, once you shape it, shield it. That means you offer it to the stakeholders, provide those tutorial sessions and then constantly improve. Once you improve, those good points which works sustain and those points that need improvement, you correct. So, I gave you an analogy of a stool and then I give you an example of a pyramid. So, that pyramid will have four attributes. First, sensing the need. This is sector oriented. Then you shape it. Then you shield it and you sustain it. So, this will be helpful for you as a good take home message. With that, I will stop and then I think there will be some interaction in Q&A. Uh, I'll try to stay. It's around 2.30 a.m. for me, but it's a pleasure to uh, gain wisdom every day. So with that, I again thank Dr. Mishra, Dr. Yadav and Dr. Rao for uh, putting this session. And, uh, and I would love to hear from ILO and others on the panel. Thank you.